The topic of, of this um, series of talks uh, of Creative Mornings is money. And I think it's a very um, sensitive topic for designers. It's a very hard topic because we are not um, uh, so educated about it. We, we don't study uh, um, this at school, so we are not used to talk about money, to deal with money, to invest our, our money. Um, I work for, I, I learned to, to deal with money when I worked in-house. I worked many years for uh, Levi's. I was a design director there. And uh, yeah, I used to handle the budgets for, for a shop window or for a catalog uh, print. Um, and actually I was, I was always very surprised of how much money they will invest in, in reaching their customers. And actually they are ideal customers, which wasn't necessarily the one that will actually buy their things, but it was this um, ideal customer that was cool, that was um, creative, that was well-educated, that um, was good-looking. Um, so I think this, uh, you can send me this illustration, that is an illustration that uh, works for all the, the series of talks. And I think it pretty much illustrates our working space uh, as designers. I think most of the people here is designer or working in the creative field. And I think with the time, um, this working space becomes, um, turns into something a little bit more like this, where it's our um, world, it's our um, um, a small world where, where we have um, Wi-Fi and we have our coffee and our computer and everything works perfect. We have our clients, they give us work, we work for them. Sometimes they give us more work, sometimes they give us less, but we go with it. Um, so we sort of create this, this comfort zone um, um, and we start to live with it and not moving out of it. So this is what we do. We get a job, we execute it, and we get paid. And we will hope that better times will come when we will get better jobs, have more freedom to execute them, and get better paid. Of course, this is uh, considering that you're doing good work and that you're professional in what you're doing. Um, but do you know what there's in between these two stages? Someone? <coughs> Long period of time. There's a lot of waiting. <laughs> um, a lot of waiting for the real good jobs that we can do or the work that we really want to do. And also the possibility that it may never happen. Um, has any of you said this quote sometime or heard it from someone? Okay, good. I, I did it also. <laughs> and um, this, is, this is so not true um, because there are so, much, uh, so many good people, um, so many people doing good work out there. And they're visible uh, through internet, through all the networks. Um, so we, we sort of have to open our ways to, to show that we are actually good and to go after the good work we want to do. So uh, through the years I developed a sort of a process where I actually, instead of waiting, I, I just do it. And I, I do these great jobs that um, I could potentially do and I show it. And, um, and I share it with people and other people see it. and. Um, it sort of uh, goes through, um, um, it sort of develops and eventually brings me better jobs, more freedom to execute, and, uh, to execute them and I get better paid. Um, but I think for, that for doing this, you sort of have to leave this comfort zone that you create over the time. So a couple of years ago, I left my comfort zone uh, big time. I moved to Berlin. And although it might seem very uh, exciting, um, 
it can also be very critical for a person. You have to uh, find a new place to live. Uh, uh, you have to learn the language. Uh, everything changes. Um, uh, you have to find new friends. Um, but it can also be um, a, a very good opportunity to sort of leave behind what you didn't like, uh, uh, sort of mold your work again. So I, as uh, Jürgen said, I just came, at the time I just came out of my master's in type design. So I had a lot of new knowledge um, that I, I wanted to share. And when I came to Berlin, uh, uh, teaching seemed um, impossible. Uh, not impossible, but unlikely. Or impossible, yeah. <laughs> um, so I started my own series of workshops that I call Good Time. Um, and in the beginning, they were for free. And actually, it allowed me to try out, um, to try out my own skills. So, so I produced um, a lettering for the purpose. And I did a sort of identity for the prizes and uh, the diplomas and stuff. Um, so what I was doing in these workshops, and I still do uh, when I organize them, is to, um, to sort of um, guide the people through their own projects. And this was a very good training for me because I had to come up with ideas for every different project that they were doing. Um, and also, um, I was to teach the techniques that I, that I was uh, teaching there, I had to improve my own work. So I was taking late, um, early work that I had done, I had done at the time. This was a very early lettering attempt, and I was improving it and recording the whole process so I could show, um, I could teach in my workshops the decision making, I could speak about balance and composition, and letter shapes and weight. And I could show a finished piece that looks very <laughs> strange here. <laughs> um, but for this purpose, I was creating a lot of other letterings. So I was trying out um, a, a lettering inspired in Sutalin uh, handwriting. Um, also trying out lettering in, uh, done with uh, outlines, um, brush script. English lettering, and I was doing different logotypes in every, in every session, so it was another excuse to, uh, for me to produce more work. And um, every time my workshop will have a different identity. So I was um, sort of recording, um, documenting all this in, in a blog, uh, so other people could see it, and, uh, and also it could be seen as a series. Um, and thanks to this blog, um, I was contacted to do the workshop in other cities or, or other schools. And um, I was contacted uh, uh, later by uh, Hoshule Anhalt, and I did a workshop there. And later, when they found out about my, my curriculum and that I knew about type design, then they invited me to do a course project in type design. So, this thought that I have, uh, that I had in the beginning, that I would never be able to teach in, in Germany, was actually happening through, um, through this uh, um, startup that I did with my workshops. So this is a bit the process every time, to do it and to show it, and um, eventually this will lead to something else, because if you don't show it, then um, it doesn't exist. No one knows that it's in your computer, and. Uh, it, the project cannot grow. So these little small projects, um, I think they keep you in action, they keep you uh, producing work, and they help you to afford bigger projects. One of the longest and uh, biggest projects that I self-initiated projects that I've done so far is this typeface that uh, Jürgen commented on, a supernova. This was my thesis project, and I later developed it, and um, Supernova is a script typeface that is, um, it has the novelty of having optical sizes, so um, it has a poster version that you can see on the top, 
that is lively and uh, with a lot of alternates and um, uh, very playful and a more uh, and a version that is um, um, sort of designed for text setting and um, uh, yeah and it's on, done in several ways. So this it's inspired in, in brush lettering and um, yeah American brush lettering. So this is the poster version. You can see that it's uh, very lively. And it's a rather big font, so it has all these uh, decorations to uh, um, to serve as a complement for the for the typeface itself. So it has all these containers and shapes uh, to play around with. Um, and the most interesting part of, of the typeface is that um, it has a, this text cut that can serve as a companion of the of the display cut. So instead of um, of using another typeface to fulfill the readability in it, then you can use the same family and solve it out, and use and combine them to to create different hierarchies in in a design. So the poster version is very attractive, but I think the key is the text version um, because um, there were no, no references to, to design this, uh, so I, I had to do a very intense practical research about it and what makes a, a, a script readable at small sizes. So it also has this flourishing decorations for the text version. Um, and I think this is not only a successful project that I managed to do throughout the years, but um, I think it's a new idea that, um, or it's an unexplored area of tight design, and this is uh, very fulfilling. So yeah, uh, um, it has been released yesterday, so um, I'm celebrating today with you, and this is the first time I show the typeface, so hello. <laughs> um, so as I said, um, Supernova is a very big project, and um, whoever does type design here knows that it's very hard to keep you motivated uh, throughout the time, uh, because they, are, um, they take a long time to have a result. Um, and this is when the small projects come into a scene and they can help you to improve your work in between and try out different stuff. So I will speak about um, some small projects. Um, one of them is lettering versus calligraphy that I wouldn't say that it's small. Um, but it's actually a, a project that has uh, daily results or small results every day. Um, this is a project that I put together with uh, Giuseppe Cal Salerno, um, an Italian calligrapher. And um, basically, the idea is to um, uh, is to challenge our skills and to produce uh, work. Um, so what we did, um, um, we created a, a, a website for the purpose. So the the concept is very simple. On the left, you will find lettering, and on the right, you will find calligraphy. Um, and we uh, deliver a letter daily that responds to a keyboard, uh, keyboard that is sophisticated three, for instance. Um, and the people can vote for the left one or the right one. And of course, uh, I, will show in, I will be showing the battles where I won only. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so yeah, the project was very well appreciated, and I think the most people, the more people wa that was coming into the the web page, um, uh, the better we were doing. The, were, the better we were uh, pushed to um, to do more quality work. And this really proved that um, these ideas that I had about showing work, because I think that people's eyes really enhances your work. Um, then if you don't show it to anyone, if you don't uh, get critics about your work, then you will never um, uh, look, at, uh, look at it and, and reformulate it. Um, 
So if you see at the first battle that we did, this is the very first one. This is the second one. And the following ones are some, some that came later when a lot of people was already coming daily into our site. In our site, sorry. So they changed, they gave a big uh, step in quality and in decorations and um, in accuracy uh, to the keyword and, um, and how playful they are or how risky um, the proposal is. So we are creating a big library of letters and um, which compares the two techniques. Um, so I think this is a real, the uh, real key of the project that actually uh, brings together uh, two techniques and uh, puts them side by, side by side and you can compare what are the results in each of them. And I personally think that this project helped me a lot to break formulas because we designers or I think um, uh, in, in every job, everyone has its own formulas. With the time you learn to, to create um, a set of elements that you know that will lead you to a certain result. So if you combine a certain uh, a palette, a color palette with a certain structure using a certain style of, of, uh, of typefaces, you know that you will reach a certain result. So I have my own formula. I was drawing a lot of scripts before and I knew that if I would add a, a brush feel to it, they would look good. <laughs> so this was my comfort zone and uh, I knew that I could do it good and I, I was doing it good. But um, I think what, what, um, what using formulas, formulas leads to is to do a decent piece of work. And I think breaking them uh, really leads you to do extraordinary pieces, pieces of work. Um, the work that is challenging, that pushes you forward, then this is the, the work that really makes a difference in your, perfo uh, difference in your portfolio. Um, so in lettering versus calligraphy, I broke a lot of formulas that I had. I, I dared to be uh, corny and to laugh at letter forms. To take them really serious. To take them serious not. To imitate nature. And to draw like kids do. To mold letters. And to decorate them. And I think it's very important to have a, a partner in, in, in a project like this that's, that, uh, um, that really goes with you in, in such a venture. And I'm really ha happy that I found Giuseppe for this because he's a very talented and enthusiastic uh, calligrapher and we set each other the, the bar really, uh, really high. Um, so the work, when the work came together, was really explosive and I think that's what, what makes the whole project uh, successful. Um, and we have collaborators uh, for, for this project, a, a lot of um, uh, type designers, calligraphers, um, uh, letterers and even writers um, that uh, were really happy to moderate some of the battles. Um, we also have a very important collaborator, Paco Gonzalez, which actually sort of, um, he assisted at, us on everything and also he, he was sort of a moderator between us and if he, he would bring us back, back to earth with the ideas. Um, and with this same concept, we are doing a workshop that combines both techniques uh, into design. So the project, the, the idea is so, great, I think, that it can develop into a lot of shapes, uh, like an exhibition, for instance, that will take place um, 
as, as, as Jürgen said, next week in at Mota Italic from Rob and Sonia Keller. So you are all invited. Uh, and the, the last project that I will speak about is this little card that you found there that I brought some for you to have. Um, actually, it's, um, I wouldn't even call it a project, I would call it an action. Um, um, but th this action I did was rather simple and um, yeah, and uh, actually the motivation was to do a piece of work that, the, that I could send to people and the people would keep. So I did some sort of uh, placeholder for uh, the wishes of each one, uh, each one of the people I was sending the card to, um, to put their wishes for the new year. So it's called three for 13, three wishes for 2013. And, um, and I think it's a very small thing that brought uh, two great uh, um, new stuff for me. Um, I sent it to um, Hans and Frank, an agency, an illustration agency in UK that I had in mind for a long time and uh, I wanted to contact them for, yeah, uh, for that purpose. And um, actually this, this little car called their, their attention and they contacted me and they are representing me uh, since then. And they have put me in contact with great projects and a really challenging work. Um, like this uh, cover magazine for um, New Statesman, a, a magazine in the UK, which um, pushed me to uh, research on Israeli patterns and uh, Hebrew letter forms. So I had to uh, design letter forms that had to do with these shapes. Um, also this project uh, for Esquire in the UK that I had to also dig into um, the, the English uh, sign painting in bars and also the windows uh, painting in bars and this uh, work that is a work in progress for, for uh, Penguin Books that um, uh, challenged me to uh, create um, a lettering out of stitches of a cricket ball. And the other thing that this little car brought is that um, uh, it called Jürgen's attention and uh, he invited me today to, um, to be here to uh, show you my work. Um, so I think this is great and uh, I think uh, this motivates me to keep doing stuff and showing them. Um, so to wrap up uh, and going back to money, I think Work is the, the, a very tangible thing we can invest um, um, to go after the jobs that we want to have. Like brands go after their ideal customer. Um, we can also go um, behind our uh, ideal jobs. But for doing this, I think we have to um, step out of this comfort zone that we created with all these formulas, which will lead us to create extraordinary work that will hopefully bring more extraordinary work. So I think it's worthwhile, um, yeah, investing the time and the, the effort in doing it than actually waiting for it to come. So thank you all for listening. Mm. <laughs>